It's probably not surprising to hear that the $4,200 Surface Studio is better than the $3,400 one. The real question is, what's the difference between a 980M and 965M? Today we're going to benchmark them and show you some real world gaming to find out. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get started with the actual benchmarks, let's talk a little bit about the differences between the 965M and the 980M. The biggest difference between these two, of course, comes down to video memory. So the 965M only has two gigabytes versus the four gigabytes found in the 980. Now that might not sound too significant, but it actually makes a big difference in performance. Now that we know some of the hardware differences between these two video cards, let's take a look at benchmarks, looking at Geekbench 4 and 3D Mark. Looking at Geekbench 4, we can see there's a significant bump in CUDA scores with the 980M getting a score of 85,580, while the 965N only yields 53,685. Now to put that in perspective, the newer GTX 1060 and the Razer Blade gets a score of 139,603, while your average KV Lake Ultrabook will get you in the range of 20,000 using Geekbench 4. Comparing results between the two PCs using 3DMark reveals a substantial improvement in graphics performance. For instance, 3DMark's graphics score jumps from 1361 to 2714. That's nearly 100% improvement, and it goes to show you that the 980M is a significant jump from the 965M. While hardware differences and benchmarks are very instructive, they're also quite abstract. Let's take a look now at two games, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Gears of War 4, to see what these real-world differences actually look like. For Gears of War 4, we turned off VSync and ran the game at 1920 by 1280 resolution. During that, you can actually play Gears on Ultra, yielding 49 frames per second when using the 980M. Bumping the graphics down to just high, and frame rates jump to a very playable 64 frames per second, which seems ideal. Meanwhile, the 965M hits only 30 frames per second on Ultra, and 38 frames per second on High. Even on Medium, the 965M struggles at just 42 frames per second. Turning to Rise of the Tomb Raider, we get similar results. Setting the display at 1920 by 1440 and using DirectX 12 and VSync off with graphics preset at high, we get a following comparison. Overall, the 980M gets an average of 56 frames per second, while the 965M only gets 33 frames per second. The bottom line between these two video cards comes down to this. The 965M will let you do high-end gaming, but it only gets your foot in the door. The 980M, though, lets you enjoy it, and that's a significant difference is if you're planning to use the Surface Studio for that occasional first-person shooter. Now, I should point out another difference here. It's not just high-end gaming, which really pushes these graphics cards, but it comes down to other things that you may use the Surface Studio for, and what it's actually designed to do, which is creation. So if you're going to use something like Photoshop Elements or just regular Photoshop Premiere for video output, the 980M will perform significantly better. In fact, I actually don't really like using the 965M version for Adobe Photoshop. You can actually feel it lag, and it's not nearly as good. Part of that comes down to things like RAM. So the 980M also has 32 gigs of RAM versus the 16 gigs of RAM. That may not matter for many of you, but for some people it will make a difference. Another issue, of course, is the SSD and the hard disk drive, which is that weird rapid hybrid drive system, which I do not like. That is also a bottleneck here, but we'll be addressing that later on in a new tutorial on how to replace the SSD. So there's my quick comparison, the Surface Studio 980M versus the 965M. Don't forget to watch my full review of the Surface Studio. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, buddy.